Brother Senior Ward, what reason are we assembled? To honor our brother that death is taken from us and to accompany ourselves and the bright futures and to also remember immortality, to raise our souls above the consideration of this transitory existence. Brother Junior Ward, what sentiment should inspire the souls of the on a day like the present? Calm sorrow for the absence of our brother who has gone before us. Eternal solicitude for our own eternal welfare and a firm faith and reliance upon the wisdom and goodness of the great architect of the universe. Brother, committing these sentiments to your earnest consideration, and hoping your assistance on the solemn ceremony is about to take place, I declare this lot of sorrow open. Let us pray. Grand architect of the universe, in whose holy sight centuries are but as days, to whose omniscience the past and future are but as one eternal present, look down upon thy children who still wander among the delusions of time, who still tremble with dread of dissolution and shudder at the mysteries of the future. Look down, we beseech thee, from thy glorious and eternal day into the dark night of our era in presumption and suffer a ray of thy divine light to penetrate into our hearts that in them may awaken and bloom the certainties of life, reliance upon thy promises, and assurance of a place at thy right hand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Centuries upon centuries have rolled away behind us, before us, stretching out an eternity of years yet to come. And on that narrow boundary between the past and the present, look at the puny things of eternal life. When we came into this world, we did not have what come before us. But as we grew into manhood, we learned of the past. We saw the flowers bloom as they had bloomed for centuries. We beheld the orbs of day and night. They pursued their endless course among the stars, like they pursued them to the birth of life. 
You learned what they had thought and said and done. From the beginning of our, our world, the argument. But only through the eye of faith can we behold what is to come hereafter. And only through a firm reliance on divine promises can we satisfy our yearning for a mortal soul. The crater speaks to us of the memory, the coffin, the hope, of a blessed trust in never in existence beyond the gloomy portal of the And when God sends his angel to us with the scroll of death, let us look upon it as an act of mercy to prevent the many sins and calamities of a long life and lay down our heads softly and go to sleep without bragging like four children. But this men get by like that their calamities are not in order, to bear great honor and temper, and to die willingly and nobly are the duties of a good man and true man. Forever, 
For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that, he, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. For thou cast me into the deep, and the midst of the seas, and thy floods compass me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet will I look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compass me about, even to the soul. The death clothes me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. I said, in the cutting off of my day, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. For thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For the grave can I praise thee, death can I celebrate thee, the living, the living. He shall praise thee as I do this day. Are not my days few? Cease, then in let me alone. That I may take comfort a little before I go whence I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. A land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order and where the light is as darkness. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, it has pleased thee to take from among us those who are our brethren. Let time, as it heals the wounds thus inflicted upon our hearts, and on the hearts of those who are near and dear to them, not erase the solitary lessons engraved there, but let those lessons always continuing, distinct and legible, make us and them wiser and better. And whatever distress or trouble we may hereafter come upon us, may we ever be consoled by the reflection that thy wisdom and thy love are equally infinite. Let the loss of our loved ones increase our affection for those who are yet spared to us and to make us more punctual in the duties that friendship, love, and honor demand. When it comes to us also to die, may firm and abiding trust in thy mercy dispel the gloom of dissolution. Be with us now and sanctify the solemnities of this occasion to our hearts that we may serve thee in spirit and understanding. And to thy name, and to thy name shall be ascribed the praises forever. Amen. Glory.
remembering for our departed brother, our deposit these white flowers in the matter of their pure life to which they have been called, and reminding us that as these children of the hour droop and fade away, so too we shall soon follow those who are going before us and inciting us so to feel the brief span of our existence that we may leave to our survivors a sweet savor of remembrance.
Let these evergreens simple, be a symbol of our faith in immortal life, that the dead are but sleeping, and find comfort in the reflection that their memories will not be forgotten, that they are still loved by those who are soon to follow them, that in our archives their names are written, and that in our hearts there is still a place for them. And so, trusting in the infinite love and tender mercy, of him without whose knowledge not even a sparrow falls. Let us prepare to meet them where there is no party, and where with them we'll enjoy eternal rest.
this word of God. Blessed be the Lord. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies, and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. But this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the thing, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? tender mercy passes all comprehension, whose goodness endureth well. Has called our brother in hence, let him judge. In ancient Egypt, no one could gain their minutes to the sacred asylum of the tomb until he had passed under the most solemn judgment before grave tribunals. Princes and peasants came there to be judged, escorted only by their virtues and their vices. A public accuser recounted the history of their lives, and through the penetrating light of truth, on all of their actions. If it were a judge, then the dead man had led an evil life. His memory was condemned in his presence of the nation, and his body was denied the honors of the sepulchre. But a masonry had no such tribunal to it, into it to judge upon her dead. With her good that the sons have done, 
lived after them, and the evil interred in with their bones. She does require, however, that whatsoever is said concerning them shall be the truth. And should it ever be that of a Mason who dies, nothing good be, can be truthfully said, she will, she will mournfully and pitifully bury him out of her sight in silence. Brother, let us profit from the admonition of the solemn page. And may the heart of many truths we have listened to dog us to walk. That when we fall to our last year, it be the pleasure of our brother to strew white flowers on our grave and keep our remembrance, pleasant remembrance. Brother C. Ward, announce the brother that our labors have been concluded. It is my pleasure that this lodge of sorrow be closed. Brother Julia Ward, the labors of the lodge of sorrow are closed. It is the pleasure of the worship master that it be closed. Make due announcement to the members that they may assist. Further, the labors of the Lord's sorrow being now ended, it is the pleasure of the master that it be now closed. Brother, let us unite with the chapel in the invocation to the throne of grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, as we leave this place, may you allow the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to rest, rule, abide, reside, and preside over each one of us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. In brotherhood we stand, and for the benefit of generations yet unborn, may God save the craft. Amen.
Before we invite the Grandmaster up, I'd like to invite Worship Master Alex uh, Williams to come in and introduce his team. Good evening. Uh, I'm gonna, my, my name is Brother Gerald Allen Williams uh, from the Pride of Palm Beach Live number 447. Um, out of West Palm Beach. I'm going to introduce our team as senior ward. We have past Master Will Williams, Delray Beach Lodge, number 275. At junior ward, we have Brother uh, Walter Gavin from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. From the senior deacon, we have Brother Stuart McFadden from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At junior deacon, we have Brother Eldrick Andrews from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. As senior steward, we have Brother Carlton Willis from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. Junior steward, we have Brother Dwayne Marshall from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At Marshall, we have Brother Calvin Floyd from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At chaplain, we have Judge Matthew Stevenson from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. Um, at Choir Director, we have Brother Elliot Bowens from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At uh, table number one, seat number one, we have Brother Patrick Glover from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At seat two, we have Brother Whitney Joseph from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At seat three, we have Brother Javante Edmonds from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. At seat four, we have past master Sandy Washington from the Pride of Palm Beach Lodge, number 447. And our, in our choir, we have Miss Crystal Harper. We have Worthy Matron, Crystal Howe. We have Pat, we have sister Katie Moore. We have past Worthy Matron, Bridget Howe. This is the team, thank you very much. And last but not least, we couldn't have done it if he wasn't directing us. Uh, we had to give a big shout out to our right worshipful Deputy Grand Master, Jeffrey G. Jones, for letting us be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, worshipful. They did an awesome job. Thank you. Give them a round of applause. And at this time, the hour has been well spent. Please all rise for our most worshipful grandmaster, Honorable Walter Gully Jr. This is a very solemn and impressive occasion, as it could be, for the brothers come together to pay one of the lasting tributes of affection to those who have been called home by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after they have labored in the vineyard, after they had done all that they have been assigned to do. We all have to go that way. Leave us in 2 Kings, I think around maybe chapter 20 or so in that first verse where Hezekiah reminds us that we're going to all die and not live. So therefore, he says, we need to get our house in order. And that's the brothers and the sisters. Because there's going to come a time well, we're going to have to give an account for the deeds done in the body. And I want to give a special congratulations to this particular team because I realized there were some changes that took place and I am so appreciative of the brothers stepping up and not missing a beat allowing everything to move on with unbroken continuity. 
And for that, you should give yourselves a round of applause. And those singers, those voices were so melodious. Probably, probably the closest thing we can get here on earth to a heavenly choir. <laughs> Anytime you can find people who can sing, old folk used to say they sang yeah. harmoniously, four part harmony. Without music, that's when you know you can sing. Amen. And again, I want to take our hat off to these uh, sisters and, and other two uh, young ladies who have jumped in and, and really uh, kind of put the icing on the cake of this. Couldn't have been possible without you all. Give yourselves a hand for that. <laughs> and last but not least, to our Deputy Grand Master, Brother Jeffrey G. Jones. Uh, last year, I said to Brother Jones I needed him to put together a team. I told him what I wanted with the largest sorrow. And I was finished with him. Because I had that much confidence in him that he would make the team jail. I didn't have to check on him. The only thing we ever, only conversation we ever have is, how's it coming? That's the end of it. And that's what you get when you have a, a good, number two line officers preparing to move to the next level. He's putting in the work down here now so that when he does get there, uh, it'll be a great day for him. So I want to commend our Deputy Grandmaster, Brother Jeffrey Jones, wherever he is. I know he can be a hard taskmaster, so I won't ask you how you meetings and practices for <laughs> Okay, thank you again, our guests, for being here, uh, being our Grand Masters to our own past Grand Master to this visiting delegation from uh, Tennessee who are uh, still here with us and any other visitors uh, on the sisters and, and the uh, brother's side. We're just glad to have you here. We've got a little more work to do before we go to the memorial program tonight, so we're gonna conclude. We have the benediction. And the preachers, pastors, none. Tap them. Thank you, great father, grandmaster, architect of this illustrious planet Earth, for letting these great kings and queens come together and dwell together for the lodge of sorrow. As we depart our separate ways, some going north, some going south, north, some going east, some going west, I ask the great father, grand master, to anoint, re-anoint, protect us, cover us, and shield us. In all things, give thanks to the utmost high, God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you.